Hello, BC Calculus students. This is Mr. Johnson, and this is the second video for section 8.5. Um, at the top here, we have just a statement about the ratio test that I mentioned in the previous video, and that is that it cannot be used to determine the uh, endpoints of the interval of convergence. So when we find the radius of convergence, we have the initial interval of conver convergence. We're unable to determine, based on the ratio test, the um, convergence or divergence of the x value on the endpoints. So we're going to see that in the next couple examples. In example three, we're going to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence given this particular power series. So again, I'm going to start off by taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the original with n plus 1. So we have the absolute value of negative 3 to the n times negative 3 to the first times x to the n times x to the first. And remember, uh, I'm, I'm simplifying this a little bit more quickly than we did earlier in the sections just because we want to be able to simplify the ratio test a little bit earlier. So we have the square root of n plus 2 in the denominator times the square root of n plus 1 divided by negative 3 to the n times x to the n, and we know it's less than 1 if it's going to be convergent. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel some of our values in here. So we have x to the n is going to cancel, and negative 3 to the n will cancel, and the square root of n plus 1 divided by the square root of n plus 2 will go to 1 as n goes to infinity. And so what we're left with is the absolute value of negative 3 times x is less than 1, and we're going to make sure to convert this into that proper form that we have, which is the absolute value of x minus a is less than one third. So we know a few things from this. We know that the center of convergence is zero. We know the radius of convergence is one third. And we know that the initial interval is negative one third to positive one third. Now we don't know what happens at the endpoints of the interval. That will be our next next task. Okay, so we're going to first start with testing x is equal to negative one third. So if you were to have, for example, an FRQ question like this, let's say it's a standard FRQ out of nine points, often the ratio test is in the ballpark of four points. And that's including the whole interval of convergence where you're testing the endpoints of the interval. So without showing the test of those endpoints, you're usually sacrificing probably two points there out of the four. You're probably sac sacrificing about half of them. Okay, so if we're going to take x equal to negative one-third and we're going to plug it in for x in this generator up here, we have the series n equal to zero to infinity. And you know, if you think about this for a second, negative one, excuse me, negative three to the n times negative one third to the n, we can combine that negative three times negative one third is simply just one to the n. And so we're left with one divided by the square root of n plus one. And again, we've simplified that down. Maybe I'll go back here and write that out so that I don't make sure that I don't confuse you there. So we have negative three to the n times negative one third to the n divided by the square root of n plus 1. And again, that simplifies to simply 1 divided by the square root of n plus 1. OK, we're having to analyze now what this series does. 1 over square root of 1, excuse me, 1 over square root of n plus 1. I'm going to use the limit comparison test for this one. The direct comparison will be a little bit tricky. Uh, just because of the format of it. So I'm going to do uh, 1 over the square root of n plus 1, and I'm going to compare that to 1 over square root of n. And if I do that, I will get 1. Of course, that's greater than 0. And so since the series of 1 over square root n is divergent by the p-series test, then the series I'm trying to analyze, 1 over square root of n plus 1, is divergent by the limit comparison test. OK, so we have our first 
end point done. That was a little bit more work than maybe what we were hoping for, but we have a second one we have to test, which is x is equal to positive one third. Now, when we go up and, and think about this one in the original, um, we have negative three to the n times positive one third to the n. We would combine that together and we would get the series from zero to infinity of negative one to the n divided by the square root of n plus one. This one's much easier for us to analyze because it is alternating, it is decreasing, and the limit of the non-alternating terms is going to zero. And so this is convergent by the alternating series test. Okay, so we have our final interval of convergence, and I'm sort of out of space here. I'll just put it over here. So we have negative one-third, which is not included because we found that was divergent, is less than x, which is less than or equal to positive one-third, which we did find was convergent by the alternating series test. So that's our final interval. Um, the problem also asks for the radius of convergence. Remember, we found that much earlier. That was one-third. Okay, let's try example four. So same thing, nothing really new here. If you want to try this one on your own, you could pause the video, try it on your own, and then you could check your work. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and just write out the ratio test. Okay, so I've written out the ratio test, and I'm going to cancel some terms here. As n goes to infinity, n plus 1 divided by n will go to 1. And so what I'm left with is going to be the absolute value of x plus 2 divided by 3 is less than 1. And of course, we want to simplify this to x plus 2 is less than 3. And we now know that, number 1, the radius of convergence is 3. That is one thing we're searching for in this problem, so we'll go ahead and box that, just to keep it organized. We know the center of convergence is negative 2, which we're not asked to find, but it's helpful information. And then we know that the initial interval of convergence, if we were to take negative 3 is less than x plus 2, which is less than 3, and subtract 2 from each side, we're going to get negative 5 is less than x is less than 1. And so our initial interval of convergence is negative 5 is less than x is less than 1. OK, so we have our, our basic setup. We need to figure out what's happening at negative 5 and at 1. So if we start with testing, x is equal to negative 5, and we look at our series generator above. We're going to substitute in negative 5 for x. So we will get the series starting at 0 going to infinity of n times negative 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1. If it's helpful, and I think it might be, I'm going to write this instead of um, 3 to the n plus 1. I'm going to write it as 3 to the n times 3 to the first because what we want to do here is combine the negative 3 to the n um, divided by n 3 to the n. So we're going to combine, I'll highlight this, we're going to combine these elements here. We're going to make it negative 3 divided by 3, that whole quantity to the n. So we're going to simplify that down. So here's what it's going to look like. The series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over 3. And so this is an alternating series. However, the limit is going to go to infinity. So because this limit, as n goes to infinity of n over 3, goes to infinity, this is going to be a divergent series. Okay, let's take a look at x is equal to positive 1. All right, we'll take a similar approach. So we're going to go back to the generator. Um, if x is equal to positive 1, we have n times, well, I'll, I'll write out the initial n times 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n times 3. And of course, the 3 to the n's cancel. And so we're left with n over 3. And for a very similar reason, this doesn't alternate. 
but simply it, the limit of this is going to go to infinity even without the alternator. Therefore, it's also going to be divergent by the nth term test. So our initial interval of convergence happens to be our final answer as well. And it's really important that you end up stating that just so that whoever's reading the test, whether it's your teacher or whether it's the AP reader, reader in the end, um, they're going to they're gonna be able to know that you understand the final interval is the one that you intended um, for after testing the points. Okay, let's go on to the next page. All right, example five is the power series with the generator A sub N, so it's kind of a generic series. And it says that it converges at five, so which of the following must be true? Well, we know based on the format of the power series that the center is at three. So if we were to visualize this for a second, we have a center at three, and it is convergent at five, which basically is communicating to us that the minimum R is equal to two. So we know that, for example, if we were to go to the other side of this interval, we know that, sorry, there we go. We know that um, this minimum interval of convergence is going to be one is less than x is less than or equal to five. So in other words, we don't know what happens at one but we know between one and five it's convergent and it tells us it's convergent at five. So we know that's closed. That's the minimum interval of convergence. We don't really know anything beyond that. Based on that information, the only answer that makes any sense whatsoever is option D. We know at two, it's absolutely convergent because it fits into our minimum interval of convergence. All right, let's take a look at example six. So example six is a lot like some of the other ones we've done. It's just multiple choice now. So we're going to do the ratio test to figure out our initial interval of convergence and then test our um, endpoints of it. So we have the absolute value of x minus 3 to the n times x minus 3 divided by n plus 1 times 2 to the n times 2. And in the numerator, we have the, uh, or excuse me, in the second part, we have the reciprocal of the original. And we know it's less than 1. Actually, let's go ahead and cancel our terms here. So we have x minus 3 to the n cancels, 2 to the n cancels, n divided by n plus 1 cancels. We're done with our limit. We have x minus 3 divided by 2 is less than 1. And then we want to simplify that and get it into our correct form. So we have x minus 3, absolute value of that is less than 2. So we know the center is 3. We know the radius is 2. We know the initial interval is going to be negative 2 is less than x minus 3 is less than 2. Add 3 to both sides so we get 1 is less than x is less than 5. Okay, let's test our endpoints. So if we test that x is equal to 1, we have the series from 1 to infinity of negative 2 to the n divided by n times 2 to the n. So again, I'm, I'm up here substituting in x is 1. Negative 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n is simply negative 1 to the n. So I'm going to make this negative 1 to the n divided by n. If I simplify that, and that is convergent by the alternating series test, or it's the alternating harmonic, which is convergent by definition. Then we also want, I'll change my colors here, we have x equal to 5. So that's going to be, let's see, that's going to be 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n times n. 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n is just 1, of course. And this is divergent by the p-series test. Or it's the harmonic series, which by definition is divergent. And so our answer is going to include 1 in the interval, and it will leave 5 open. And that looks like it is option B. Okay, one last example. I'm going to show you a little shortcut to this one. So this particular example is actually a geometric series, and you could absolutely use the ratio test. But if you are able to simplify this and realize or recognize that it is the ratio test, you can save yourself a ton of time. 
So notice that we could split up 3 to the n plus 1 to 3 to the n times 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So I can make this 1 sixth multiply by this quantity to the n, and notice that that's my r value. This was not or is not the case for the other examples we were analyzing, but in this one, instead of doing the entire ratio test that leads me into that absolute value of x minus a is less than r uh, model, I know that the geometric series is less than 1 if it's convergent. And I know that if I simplify down to x minus a is less than my radius, I not only have my radius, but I, if I needed to, I could get to the interval of convergence really quickly as well. So you could do this using the ratio test or the definition of a geometric series, which, again, saves you a lot of time. Okay, that is it for section 8.5. Thank you.